Hey guys, Jeremy here from the School of Wok Covent Garden. It's Wok Wednesdays and this week we're steaming bow. The technique of making bao at home can be relatively simple, but finding the right ingredients is the first step. And that's not always the easiest thing to do. This flour here is what we call medium gluten wheat flour. And in Chinese tradition, we get low, medium, high gluten wheat flour. The higher you go, the more elastic it becomes, almost the dough. So, you know, it, it's the medium gluten flour is very similar to a Western plain flour, just milled to a slightly finer grain, which makes it more white in colour and slightly softer. We've got some sugar. Baking powder, pinch of salt, and then some fast action dry yeast. And the next sort of tougher thing with making bao at home is that it does take a good amount of time to rest and rise. You need to leave it for a good sort of hour and a half in a warm place. Just give that a good mix. And then you've got some milk and warm water. Should be sort of warm to the touch. I'm going to start gradually mixing this in to get a sort of Play-Doh consistency. You can use a dough mixer if you have one to knead this. I always say that when you're working with dough, it's nice to use your hands at least for the first time. I used to be quite scared of doughs. Not in a horror movie style way, but just because it's one of those things that as a sort of wok chef or cuisine chef, you worry about in terms of exact quantities. But for me now, I've done it for long enough, I know that's all about just understanding textures and really feeling your way through. It's good to get your hands in. You can feel the moisture in there or not. It's definitely too dry right now, so I'm going to probably end up using all of this liquid. All right, start getting your palms into it. Pick up any excess bits of flour. It should be a relatively wet dough, and depending on your day, you might need a little splash of water extra here or there, or a little less. And now I can start really kneading it to work that gluten and get that sort of elasticity going. And you think a small person like me can't knead dough? Pretty right. I wish I had bigger arms. You get your palms into it, roll it back up, turn it. We've also got some oil. I'm going to start kneading into the dough now. It's roughly 25 grams of oil. Automatically feeling a lot smoother with that oil. If you can see right now, if I sort of push into it, it's a little grainy, but definitely together and has that elasticity. So I'm going to try and get rid of that graininess as much as possible, make it a smoother dough. Oh, I need a tea break. <sighs> you know what else I want to need? <laughs> so once you've got a smoother dough, you need to give that yeast and sugar time to interact with each other. Sugar feeds the yeast, so but we need heat with that as well. So I'm gonna just pop that back in the bowl, cover it with a little oil, just so it doesn't dry out. And then I'm gonna cover it with a damp tea towel. All right, so the bao dough has had its time to rise. You can always see the air in there. Fantastic. Look at that. Nice and soft. It's time to shape your dough. Now 
Now we're going to take say half the dough. Now I'm going to shake them into Hirata buns. So you know what the Taiwanese and the Japanese made really quite popular. I know the guys are hungry, so relatively good sized buns don't mind. I'm just going to it's what we call pinchy, pinchy, twisty, twisty. So, sort of pinching in or pinching with your right hand, your dominant hand, and twisting round and then squeezing it together to make this nice, sort of round, smooth ball of dough. And we do that with each of them. And that, what that does is it sort of creates a skin around the outside of the pastry. Right, so once you've got your nice round balls of dough, you can start to roll them out. You just need a little bit of flour. And it's time to roll. Right, so push down into your round of dough, and then you just roll it flat into a nice oval. I like to leave a little lip on either end of the bow. And then all you do is you brush that with oil. Not much. Just enough so you can open it up like a sandwich afterwards. And then you just take your chopstick in the centre, fold it over and pull the chopstick out. And you can see a lovely lip of a Hirata bun. Right, so my shapes of dough are ready. They do need enough space in your steam basket just to grow. They will almost double in size. So we're going to do one on top of the other. You can see my wok over here. It's already steaming away on a high heat. Make sure it's really bubbling. And then all you do is pop that straight over the top. Eight minutes and your steam buns will be ready. So whilst the buns are steaming, we've got a bit of time to make a quick filling. I've got some chicken thighs here left over from one of the other recipes. So I'm gonna make some spiced panko breadcrumbed chicken thighs. Let's go for it. This is really nice and simple. I've got some corn flour and some seasoning here. Curry powder, so I'm going to actually put all that curry powder into my corn flour. I'm sort of seasoning up my corn flour. Some chilli powder, really simple. Some salt and pepper. Go well salted on this, just because we won't use all that corn flour. Just want to get the flavour into the chicken. Now I'm going to wrap these pieces of chicken into my corn flour, and this is kind of more like a French technique. We're going to go seasoned corn flour into your milk. And then from your milk mix, straight into the panko. Now if you want it super crispy, then you can do that once again. You can just take your seasoned corn flour back in, milk it once more, and cover again with panko. So my bows have got a couple of minutes left. They'll switch themselves off in this high-tech school of kitchen. I'm just going to check the oil. I'm going to fry these panko chicken thighs. Yep, fizzing nicely, so that's about 180 degrees there. Get these in nice and carefully. I'm 
Of course, if you wanted something a little healthier, you could do a grilled chicken, something like that. You know, anything will work in a bow. That's why it's so good to eat. The bows have switched themselves off whilst they're frying. Let's have a look at these. Oh, look at that. Fluffy, pillowy, bouncy bows. This is looking great. Look at that. Yeah, the colour there. Just popping out that yellow. That'll be from the turmeric in the curry powder. So I've been watching Ugly Delicious. And this is definitely in that category. Although I think it looks pretty pretty. Mmm. <laughs> now there is no neat way of eating a bow. Messy fun. Crispy on the inside, that fluffy, pillowy texture of the bow itself. Oh, I could eat that all day, but I don't. So I do like a nice balanced flat. <laughs> that was so random. So I hope you liked our steam bow recipe. If you really liked it, don't forget to like the video and search video, video, video. <laughs> So if you liked our bow recipe and you want more, subscribe to our channel and like our videos.